podcast, Coast to Coast Credit. Welcome, welcome. So as you can see with the title, we're talking about toxic burn pits, um, people that were exposed in the military. What made me want to do this is uh, basically me encouraging veterans, disabled vets, um, families of veterans that um, need to sign up for the PACT Act or get additional benefits through the PACT Act. And the PACT Act, one of the things that it covers are toxic burn pits. I am not a vet. I make myself very clear on that. I do assist. I help them. I talk to them very often. Uh, there's a lot of vets that are my clients. So I hear the stories. I hear the hard, hard stories and experiences, not just in the military, but after they retired and the treatment they've received from the government, so on and so forth. And I have no idea about toxic burn pit exposure. I can read and comprehend. I have a general idea, but I didn't know about it to this extent. So I'm doing a reaction video on a couple of, of video clips in case maybe you want to need to be more informed as well. But it's pretty interesting. So I'm going to share this one clip with you. This first clip is um, with PBS News. So we're going to check it out right now. Let me just get going. And then I'll say my little comments in between. <laughs> in between. But uh, the thing that got me about this particular one is, is that the title is in question form. Did military burn pits make soldiers sick? Why wouldn't they? But you know, that was just a question. <laughs> but let's see what they have to say. Brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder are two well-known signature wounds of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. But there is another injury. Wait a minute, wait a minute. She said, this woman said brain injury, but she said it like I'm supposed to automatically know that it goes without saying. If you are a vet, boom, as you already know, brain injuries are the num one of the main things that are claimed by vets. Let me hear that again because... Psh, Brain injury and post-traumatic stress disorder are two well-known signature wounds. They're two well-known. I know about PTSD. I am aware of that. I, that goes without saying. In my brain, every vet has PTSD. But brain injury, like, I'm just supposed to automatically be like, oh, yeah, that's automatic. That's m messed up if that's facts. I'm sure it is. But damn. So the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. But there is another injury, lung disease, that afflicts tens of thousands of veterans. Many blame a single defense contractor and have filed a class action lawsuit, a case that has now made its way to the Supreme Court. NewsHour producer Dan Segalen has been covering this, and Hari Srinivasan has the story. Keep in mind, this is an old video clip. I meant to say that. So the PACT Act wasn't even offered at the time, I don't think. But uh, just keep that in mind. Right. We have a oh, here. This shaky video of smoke from burning garbage was oh shot by an American God. soldier in Iraq in 2008. Throughout Ooh. most of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, the military used so-called burn pits to dispose of virtually all waste. That is what we live next to. Luckily, wow. the wind's not blowing our way today. Wow. All kinds of things went up in smoke, from batteries, paint, oh. solvents and tires, to newspapers. Plastic water bottles, styrofoam, electronic equipment, and shipping materials such as plastic wrap. Even whole vehicles were burned. At large bases, 30 to 40 tons of garbage were burned every day. At the gigantic logistical hubs, three to five times that amount was burned. They got two piles going. Sometimes jet fuel was even used to ignite the trash. Ooh. Wow. According to the veterans we spoke to, the smoke from the burn pits permeated the living quarters and workspaces on base. Oh my gosh, of course. There was really no it. place to escape. The smoke would blow across you, you'd turn your back to it and hope that the wind would change. You have to breathe or you die. And uh, sometimes even the soot would fly out of the burn pits and get on your uniform or on your vehicle. That is bananas. Like that, that's crazy. I can't even. Wow, I can't imagine no stuff like that. Sorry, y'all. Uh, I'm playing with around. This is what I meant to do. I can't. I can't imagine that at all. And one of my clients, she's a vet, 
she said that they would throw feces in there too. So they left that out. I guess they were trying to be polite, but yeah. Wow. That's horrible. That's so horrible. Thank you guys so much for serving our country. Thank you for dealing with this shit. Um, I'm so sorry. At night, uh, when the winds dropped, that's when you did not want the burn pits to be operating or else it would blanket the base. These three officers, Army Sergeant First Class Stephen Gardner, Army Lieutenant Colonel Rick Lambert, and Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel Brian Bauer were medically retired from the military. They say the burn pit smoke was toxic and made them sick. Mm. I used to run five minute miles. Now I can't walk down the block without breathing real heavy. Mm. I can't carry objects without getting out of breath. I have a tightness constantly in my chest. I no longer can hold out to run. I don't have the stamina. At one time I could go run five or six and a half miles at a time, a 10K at a time. A lot of times, even during the day, I cough and people look at me like I'm a smoker. Mm. Sometimes it's embarrassing. Mm. I believe that I have lung cancer as a result of exposure to the burn pits. Wow. I'm not a smoker. I was diagnosed within a year after leaving active duty. And the diagnosis came from the Veterans Administration. It was diagnosed as exposure to burn pits. And I had part of my lung removed. Oh These men God. are part of a class action lawsuit, which this is horrible. Like I, I never, this never crossed my mind. It, it, it never crossed my mind that our soldiers were dealing with anything like that. It never crossed my mind that this was a thing. I, I'm going to keep playing around with this till I get it straight. This is where I'm trying to go. But I, I, this is unbelievable. The fact that he had to get his lung removed, I believe it. I definitely, definitely, for sure, believe it. And I am so sorry. This is so incredibly heart-wrenching. Which has 250 named plaintiffs. But they represent a group of potentially up to 100,000 veterans and civilian contractors who could join the suit. They're suing Kellogg, Brown & Root, or KBR, the company that used to be a subsidiary of Halliburton and was contracted to provide logistical support to the military in Iraq and Afghanistan. It was KBR's job to truck in supplies, feed troops, and get rid of the garbage. We've outlawed burning of waste in this country for decades. You cannot go in your backyard and burn all your trash in a bucket. And the reason why is that it's known to be harmful to human health. Duh. Susan Burke is the lead attorney okay for, for the our class soldiers? action lawsuit. She says KBR was negligent and made the service members sick. One of the things that they promised to do was to take care of the waste, to dispose of waste in a manner that was not harmful to the troops. They didn't do that. So the mm. complaint alleges that that open air burning, which violated the terms of the contract, caused these injuries. That's completely false. We exactly lived up to our contractual promise. Robert Matthews is the lead counsel for KBR. He points to a letter from the commander of coalition forces in Iraq, General David Petraeus, to Congress written in 2008. The letter says, quote, there is and will continue to be a need for burn pits during contingency operations. Mm. The Government Accountability Office issued a report confirming that the top military commanders approved the use of these open air fires. The decisions to use burn pits were made by senior military rank across these war theaters. Matthew oh my gosh, I don't even know who to believe at this point. I, the military is blaming the company. The company is blaming the military. It seems like no one wants to take responsibility for this, which makes sense because this is going to be very expensive. Very expensive. We're not feasible. Burying the refuse off base was too risky. Burying it on base, well, there wasn't enough space. There was no recycling in Iraq and Afghanistan, and it was up to the military to decide if it wanted to bring in incinerators which burn cleanly. He says historically, the army always burned its garbage in war zones because it's the least bad option. More than 50% of the burn pits that are in play around Iraq and Afghanistan through that 10 year period were operated by the military itself, not by KBR or other contractors. Mm. The class act That's a good point. That's a good point. Action lawsuit has been in the courts since 2008. Just earlier this year, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that the case should go forward. But KBR has asked the Supreme Court to intervene. 
the company asserts that just like the government, it should be immune from lawsuits. Hmm. Where the United States is at war on a battlefield engaged in combatant activities, uh, the uh, companies like KBR, who are embedded with the forces, who are performing mission critical services, should not be subject to the kind of claims that have been made here. <laughs> it sounds like he's trying to cop out, y'all. It sounds like he's trying to cop out. I get it. I understand you don't want that work. It's going to be extremely expensive. It's going to take you out of business. You got to file bankruptcy. I get all of that. But this is just messy. Somebody has to step to the plate on this. And I, I guess that's what the PACT Act's for. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. If the United States is immune from such claims, so too should KBR and those other contractor companies. Susan Burke disagrees. What they are trying to say is that simply because they work for the government, they are the government. We know that's not the case. Mm -hmm. This is a private company that's making mm -hmm. a huge profit margin. They are not the government and they don't deserve the government immunities. By 2010, the military eventually shipped in nearly 40 incinerators to Iraq and 20 to Afghanistan. Although the veterans we spoke wow, to said at, they often look at all were that not used. We don't smoke. know if we're receiving fire or if that's exploding paint. Then it's only yards Besides away. These legal issues, there the is crazy thing is these burn pits are only yards away from tents and soldiers. And even the soldiers that you can see driving around the burn pit, that's their job some of them are assigned to the burn pits like that's crazy his debate over how much burn pits contributed to people's illnesses craig postalweight is a top official in the defense department's public health division he says it is possible that some soldiers got sick from inhaling burn pit smoke but not likely that many were affected it would be plausible for a specific individual maybe to acquire some kind of condition related to burn pit smoke, depending on how close they were to the burn pit, how much smoke they breathe, individual susceptibilities, and even exposure to other airborne particulates. We feel that if there are people who have been harmed by burn pit emissions, if the they're... numbers are fairly low. Okay, let me make sure I heard that right. Did that mean say if people are acquire some oh. kind of condition related to burn pit smoke, depending on how close they were to the burn pit, Jesus. how much smoke they breathe, oh my individual God. susceptibilities, matter. and even exposure to other airborne particulates. Oh, please. We feel that if there are people who have been harmed by if burn there pit are. emissions, okay. the numbers are fairly low. What? Yo. <laughs> this is enraging like this is pissing me off like that's if there are you hear what he's saying if there are and if if there are the numbers are low not according to the pact act not according to all the people that also are going points to, to many applied. other pollutants in the air they that could to have apply. caused veterans respiratory problems it's a very very dusty environment and let's not forget the ash, like once things cool off and it's emitting a certain gas and toxins and the ash, is, it's horrible. Plus the urban pollutants aren't regulated well, their cars and, and exhaust are not regulated. So there's a lot of airborne material in the air that could be contributory towards long-term health effects. This is really inhibiting the... Fibrosis. But you Dr. See, Anthony Zima I keep sees telling a you guys, connection. pay attention to the choice words. Could be. It's not could. It is. It's not could. It did. Connection between sick veterans and the burn pits. At Stony Brook School of Medicine in New York, where he does research, he's exposed mice to dust from military bases in Iraq that had burn pits. In this healthy mouse, we then gave dust from Camp Victory, Iraq collected in 2007 at the time they had burn pits, and the dust induces a lung injury. Zima has a private practice and is also a doctor at Northport Veterans Affairs Medical Center, although the views he expresses here are his own. Humans exposed to particulate matter air pollution have a higher risk of death, premature death. There are higher risks of lung disease, such as premature emphysema, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, even in the absence of smoking as well as asthma. Benzene is a carcinogen. So if you burn your trash with jet fuel called JP8, when you burn in a burn pit, it's burning at low heat. At low heat, it generates more particles 
mm. and has products of incomplete combustion. These products are dangerous. In addition, if you burn plastic water bottles, among the uh, chemicals you can release include a neurotoxin called N-hexane. While the lawyers and the health professionals debate the legal and medical issues, the veterans we spoke to compare their experiences to soldiers exposed to Agent Orange in Vietnam. That's the defoliant the army. Now, now we're getting into Agent Orange. Seriously? Whatever. We used, which caused cancer, nerve damage, and respiratory injury mm -hmm. in hundreds of thousands mm -hmm. of soldiers. Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel Brian Bauer. Nobody went out to purposely hurt Again, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. And so, but people are suffering from exposure to it afterwards. And the military response is very similar, probably to Agent Orange, hmm. which was at first denial, probably assessment. You see, choice words, even this soldier. I understand he fought in Iraq and it was different than Vietnam, but you're saying words that are not directly correlating the two when it's obvious that it is. It, it should be. <laughs> and it's, I feel that even the soldiers are conditioned to think in a certain mannerism. I digress. I'll say a little more. We're almost done this video. Acceptance of culpability and treatment. We seem to be going through those same phases now. The mm. veterans we spoke to say, while they wish they weren't sick, they'd still serve in Iraq and Afghanistan all over again. I'm proud of my military service. I'm proud of what the, the, the military has done over there. Um, if I had known that this would be my outcome, I still would have, would have continued um, and done exactly the same thing. Meanwhile, KBR says if they and other battlefield defense contractors are allowed to be sued, it's unlikely they would deploy with the military in the next war. If they are exposed to these lawsuits for decades of litigation and potentially tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars in liabilities, then it's very likely that these companies are going to think twice about stepping forward the next time this country goes to war. The Supreme Court is now in the process of deciding whether or not to hear the case or to send it back to a lower court where it can go to trial. Mm. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Hari Srinivasan. Okay. Okay, that's a lot to unpack right now. Um, that's heavy as hell. <laughs> Again, um, for all of the vets out there, thank you for serving our country. Thank you for putting your life on the line to protect us civilians. I am truly sorry and deeply apologetic that you've been treated this way by our government and. I'm glad that the, the PACT Act is finally here, um, but this is this is a lot. What I think I'm going to do, <laughs> because this is such a heavy topic, I am going to do a separate video where I express my true opinions on this. Uh, but in the meantime, let me know what you guys think. Uh, were you a vet? that has been exposed to burn pits, toxic burn pits. I mean, what's a non-toxic burn pit? Does that exist? That's a million dollar question. I, ooh, it was a couple things that video I didn't like, but I'm gonna address it in my other video, like my reaction to all of this, my opinion, my rant. It didn't sit well with me. I will say that, um, let me know. In the means, leave a comment, like, subscribe, download, share, whatever. Let me know, man, because this is heavy. Are you guys going to file if you were affected or your family? Are you going to file um, under the PACT Act? Because looking at this, you will more than likely be approved, okay? Shit. I don't know. I don't know what to say right now because I'm so upset. I'm going to do another video um, where a soldier actually expresses his experiences with the burn pit exposure. The toxic, let me say toxic burn pit exposure. So in the meantime, be sure, like I said, to like, share, subscribe, subscribe, comment. And I wish.